EPA and USPSA are the two main action pistol events that kind of we're talking about. Be on the lookout for PCSL. That's another one that'll probably gain traction, but reeling it back, USPSA and IDPA. Um, USPSA tends to be a little bit more oriented towards speed, further target engagement, and more creativity with stage planning. IDPA tends to have a little bit closer engagement with targets, and then there's tactical priority in which you have to engage targets as they become a threat. It's got a little different scoring system with time plus, whereas with USPSA, you have hit factor. But to get to the point, um, so with IDPA, generally speaking, at least locally, um, each stage that you do will have around an 18 round uh, demand, right? So something like Blade Tech or Ghost that makes these mag pouches that clip to your belt. Um, you figure, okay, in the People's Republic of New York, we are limited to restricted magazines of 10 rounds. So if you have two 10-round mags, 20 rounds, plus one in your gun, that's 30 rounds. You can go play IDPA. Um, holsters, you want out-of-the-way span that's going to clip on a regular belt that you'd wear. Um, but that's pretty much all you need. So for IDPA, out-of-the-way span holster, two mag pouches. I'm a big fan of Blade Tech. Um, Ghost is another one. I mean, it's just like anything else. You can spend $80 on a mag pouch, like these double alpha uh, for USPSA, or you can go to Blade Tech and get, um, you know, one of these that's probably more like 10 or 15. So IDPA, strong side, out of the waistband holster, two mag pouches, you're ready to ball. USPSA, most people, uh, you could run an IDPA setup, but USPSA, again, in New York, because of our capacity restriction, um, stages can be anywhere from eight rounds to 32. So me personally, I usually carry five magazines on me. So you generally only need 40 rounds. That's going to get the job done. But uh, always nice to have an extra in terms of some backup. Oh, sure. So USPSA, you run this fancy belt here. See how the camera can pick it up. What this is, is it's got an inner belt that goes on your pants. That's Velcro lined. And then there's an outer belt that's super stiff. So basically you put the inner belt around your pants and then you slap the outer belt over the top of it. A couple of reasons for that. One, the outer belt is super stiff. So when you're grabbing your magazines at high speed, you know, you hope that this stays rigid. So it's predictable and repeatable. Um, the other thing is all your mag pouches basically get tightened on super tight. So these things have very little movement, right? There's not any lateral play that you compete or you know, contending with again. So it improves that predictability. Uh, I guess as a slight metaphor, USPSA in a lot of ways is kind of like formula one, right? It's, it's going fast with guns. So as much of the variables you can take out with equipment in terms of having a standard placement of where your magazines are coming from and not having your mag pouches move around a bunch, the better. Um, you can run things like a drop holster. And again, some people are probably looking at this and they're like, dog, this is like straight up gamer belt. Like you ain't going to carry that. You're right. You're not going to carry this. Um, but to me, with USPSA, it's not necessarily about having carry equipment, although plenty of guys will compete with their carry guns. It's about what can I push the absolute limits of my skills with, isolating the variables of like predictability with drawing your gun and pulling a mag, and then figuring out how damn fast I can shoot a given course under pressure one time on the clock. So long-winded way of saying USPSA, you're generally going to have like a double belt setup. Again, I'm a huge fan of Blade Tech. You guys can check that out. They're affordable. Um, this is a Blade Tech holster right here. Some USPSA nerds might find this interesting. There's a company called GX, which makes very nice holsters. They're very expensive, and there's a long lead time. This right here is a $20 McMaster car. If I can touch it. Cam lever. Uh, I installed this myself with a drill. And what this does is I let all the tension out of my holster here. And then when I'm not competing, I drop the cam lever down so that the gun stays planted because you absolutely <laughs> cannot have your gun pop out when you're walking stages, pacing targets. But when it's my time to shoot, I pop that bad boy right up and there's like no resistance. It's one of the other things that I absolutely love about competition and this environment is this breeds innovation. 100%. So much of, of the end products, now it takes years to get there, and it might not be that exact idea. Yes. But there's probably a holster company that just saw this, because obviously there's like thousands of people watching. Yep. And that's going to be on a product in a year from now. Yep. Like, 100%. And like GX is already doing it. That's the Matt Wolf special. That's a $60 Blade Tech holster with a $20 part. And, and guys, again, I want to emphasize, like, I'm getting a little nerdy with some of my gear. 
you are totally fine to get your blade tech set up. Get your two mag pouches and a holster for IDPA. You're going to want four of these for USPSA. Go out and shoot. You don't need to break the bank. I'm a pretty frugal person. Um, I'm fortunate through hard work to starting to move up in the ranks and doing better. So I'm investing a little bit more in gear. You don't have to go buck wild with the gear if you don't want to.